Hello, Nuno Cossé and Fernando Ronick. Hello, George. Hello, Nuno. We are here back again to talk about the new Docker integration on Azure. I made my first video. We can watch again. Uh, you will learn how to log in the, the Docker in Azure using the ACI. And now the Nuno comes with the second part showing the Docker Compose on the Azure ACI. Exactly. Yes. Hi, everyone. Yeah, good, good. Good to have you here. Just remember, if you like our videos, please subscribe. It support us and keep us making new videos, right? So, during the, the first uh, video that you did, uh, you showed us how to create the ACI context and then deploy a single container to the context, right? right. So, uh, when Docker released the uh, this new ACI uh, module or feature, um, they actually brought another very nice actually feature uh, with Docker Compose. So there's a new way of doing Docker Compose, especially for the cloud. Okay. So for now, it's a Docker Compose, and we will see it just after. It's a Docker Compose that will work as again as if you were like working uh, locally. It has some limitations still to this day. So the implementation with SCI and now with AWS uh, are still being done, right? So uh, in the future, sorry, in the future, uh, potentially all the features that we have locally with Docker, we will have them also for the cloud, right? So for time being, what I did is like I uh, git cloned uh, the awesome compose uh, repository, okay, which is uh, a very nice repository with all, uh, already some applications, okay, in uh, with the compose files and everything. Uh, as you can see, it's done by Docker uh, initially, but uh, the community, of course, are free to contribute always. So, and in this awesome compose uh, repo, what we have, we have already a ASP.NET MSSQL application. So, if I just list, we can see that there's a app folder. Uh, and then we have already the, the compose file. So, if I just get it for the time being, we can see that uh, there's two services, a web and a DB. The web will build, okay, on top of the let's say the app folder. So it will build the app, and then uh, the service will be available on port 80, and it will also actually create uh, a Docker, uh, not Docker, sorry, Microsoft SQL Server uh, on Linux. Okay, so when I'm local, so again a Docker context ls when I'm local. So I'm running on the default uh, Docker desktop, right? If I do a Docker compose, right? And mind now that there's a dash, so it's really like the Docker compose binary. Docker compose up dash D. It will run the, the, the compose file. So it will create first the network, okay, for the for this application to use. And then now it's downloading the build. So this one, while it does that, so let me just duplicate here. So it will be not that pretty on the side, but that's okay. So here, if we go again to the awesome compose, the ASP.NET, and now we will go to the app folder. If I list it, you can see that we have then here the Docker file. So that's what this first part here is doing. Okay. So if I cat the, oops, not what I want, the Docker file, we can see. So from .NET Core 2.1. So that's what it's uh, taking right now. Okay. And okay, it did it. Then it will copy the solution. So the project, the ASP.NET solution project and then it will build it with .NET, okay? Finally, here, the runtime, so uh, it's a multi-build uh, Docker file, right? 
So when you have like the first part here, it you might end up with a bigger image with uh, lots of things, right? So what they did here is like once you build your application and you have like uh, potentially uh, just a binary that will come out of it, then you can run a very smaller image. So your footprint goes very low. And this one is where you will have your application and actually your DLL, okay? Yes, so no, no. In the first image, you have the full SDK. You are building the application with the full SDK. And then the second image, we have only the runtime. It's a very exactly. lightweight image, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so you can see that in this app folder, that's what we did just before. So we were there, okay? So let me exit here. And while we were speaking, the build has been done. And now we did the up. So if I just do a Docker, let me do the normal way, Docker container LS, we will see that we have like two containers. So uh, the font is big, so, so it's better for reading. And we have two containers. So the database container here, uh, we can see the name here and then also the web, and we can see that it mapped the port 80 on my machine to the port 80 inside the container, okay? So now if I come back here, let's test a, it. I do a local host without all the mess here. And here we go, we have the application, okay? So cool, that's nice. Uh, let me do a Docker, and not space, not yet. <laughs> okay, down. So it will remove the, the resources that I'm using. Okay, so I don't have any more the containers running. Perfect. Okay, so the application did up, went down, and now if I do a refresh, of course, we won't have it. So the promise of, let's say, Docker is now that if Again, I go to the ACI cloud, right? So Docker context use, and I called my ACI, uh, let's say context, uh, Azure clouds, okay? Is that normally now, if I just do a Docker without anything, we will see that now compose is no more a binary, but it's a command, a sub command, okay? Like context or run or whatever. Okay, so Docker Compose is here. So we will think that doing a Docker Compose up dash D, okay, would actually create something. Problem, as you can see, the image cannot empty for web. So the image is not really empty, okay, but we were building it. So for the time being, that's one of the limitations of Docker ACI is that we cannot build, okay? So no problem. Let's go back to our default context, okay? Let's go to the app directory. And instead of running the Docker Compose, what we will do is like we will do a Docker build. Uh, I will name it so this is my Docker uh, user, okay? And I will call the azuretar underscore or dash SCI web, okay? It will be a latest, that's okay. And I will build what I have here. So as we can see, thanks to the pulling the image before, so I'm going very faster right now, right? So the image was already pulled, so I could go directly to the app, bam, 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 and now it's done. So I have my image, okay, this one, Docker image LS. So I do have the image now ready, but still on my local machine, right? So now I will have to Docker, and hopefully I am logged in still, but I will do a Docker push of my image, okay? This will push to Docker Hub. Okay, cool. All right, so I have to do a Docker 
login just before. Okay, my username, my super duper secret passwords. Beautiful. And now I can push. All right. So as we can see, it's like it's quite very light, right? For a runtime on ASP. Again, it's on uh, Linux. Uh, so it's the .NET runtime on a Linux uh, image. And here we could push it. And done. Perfect. And so if I just come back now, what we will do is like we will copy the Docker Compose and we will call it the Docker Compose ACI YAML. And let's show, okay, it will be code, perfect. So Docker Compose ACI YAML. VS Code will download. Or I think I have a bug maybe with this one. Let's see. Uh, no, nah, okay. No problem. So sorry for the ones reading. I, I wanted to show code, but uh, I think I, I messed up my 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 configuration. So a good old VI is always good. So here, what we will do is like we will just comment out um the this line okay and we need to be careful and i will add the image that we did just before okay here we go so instead of building the app i actually i'm adding now the image directly okay the rest is done so i will save it and now that we have the image with everything okay we can finally again do a context switch or use okay to my azure cloud sci instance or context and now let's do a docker compose again not the binary but the command docker compose up dash f my docker compose sci file and dash d for detached and if i do that now my group so it's a container instance group that was created okay so a asp.net mssql is uh, the container groups are part of the azure container uh, instances and now it's creating the web it's creating the db and let's wait just a few seconds if everything goes well should be quite fast right what do you think about this one i think that's great no no i think it's great because you know you're just going to pay for one instance of the aci and you can still have both you know the front end and the database to play you could even have another one you could have the api you know uh, REST API is a separate component there. Then, then you know, SimFly is quite cheap as well. You just pay when it's running. Mm -hmm. Once we stop and destroy, that's done. You just pay. It's like the same price. It's like even cheaper than Azure Functions. That. <laughs> nice, good. So you heard it by Azure Legend, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's cheaper. Believe me. So, okay. Anyway, while it's creating and it might take just a little bit of time, actually, what I did is like I went to uh, the portal directly and I'm already on the container instances. If you don't know or if it's the first time, uh, really use the search. It's really, really great. Believe me. Okay. So, um, do the search. And here, if I do a refresh, we should see here we go. We should see our container group. We can see the status is creating and on which the uh, subscription. Thank you, my MVP for the enterprise subscription. But uh, thanks to that, um, we have now a container group. And if I click on it, we can see that it's still creating. The OS type here, see Linux for the container uh, group. And then I have an IP address here and I will show you how uh, mm. to see it also from Docker, of course. 
And okay, we have some other uh, settings and uh, dashboards here about CPU and memory. And on the sides, which is important, is like we have here containers. It might become a little bit small, sorry, but it's just like uh, already constrained on my screen. But here on the highlights, you will have containers and we can see, okay, it ended, okay. Everything is uh, is running and you can see that SCI is smart enough that they put like a sidecar, uh, more on the Kubernetes world, this terminology, but anyway, so you have a sidecar that is running the DNS, okay? So if we go back here, we can see now that it's done. It took almost two minutes, uh, a little bit longer than I expected, but still very fast actually. Uh, so Docker, so now if I do a Docker container LS, so it's the new, let's say terminology from Docker that you should use, let's say on local on or servers. Unfortunately for SCI, it doesn't still uh, exist, okay? So we will do the normal Docker PS. And here we will see both our containers are running, the SQL server, the web, and this time Azure, kindly enough provided us directly with uh, external IP. And if we test it here, enter, here we go. We have our Docker Compose application published on ACI directly from the console, from WSL, you know me. So yeah. of course, if we do the Docker Compose down and before I click enter, let me again come here. So we saw everything here. If I go back to the overview, now we should see see some small metrics. Okay, the network was done, and when I accessed it, it uh, it went to uh, 12 megabyte of memory, which is nothing, of course. All right. So if I do the Docker Compose down, it will reach for again Azure. And this time the down was really fast. Here, if I click on overview, I should have an error. And if I go back to, uh, if I close here, actually, sorry. If I do a refresh, it's still. It takes a little bit of time. I ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Show update on the site, maybe yeah, in 30 I seconds. Because on my side, I don't have anything anymore. Yep. So this one should. Okay, here we go. Done. You're right. 30 seconds, approximately. But then, and we closed it. And so, if anyone is seeing this video in the future, sorry, the IP is no more available. So that's actually it. That's what I wanted to show uh, how to use the compose files that you might have already created. Uh, and how to use them on the ACI instance. Yeah, that's very good. And just advice there, um, if you're going to put these idea in production, just make sure that you can share, you know, because when you put it all together, you're sharing the same Docker namespace. And if there is any security concern, just make sure that you are aware that they're all running like on the same, you know, namespace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you do the create the Docker Compose, uh, how do you say, um, SCI, uh, it, it does actually uh, create this container group that uh, I guess is the what you would call the, the namespace. It would be so, like one pod. Yeah, pod, you know, all the containers inside the pod, they share hmm. the same namespace. So I will just stop presenting. Here we go. And uh, yeah, that was it. So we have more videos about uh, Docker on ACI. So activate your notifications to keep updated. Thanks, Nuno. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.